Greetings, everybody. This is Sunita Chandrasekharan from the University of Delaware in the US. First up, I hope you, your family, and friends are doing safe and healthy. As you know, ISC 2020 has gone all digital, and to that end, this is about one of the five invited program or focus session tracks. I'm leading the track on parallel programming and performance modeling. To that end, I have broken my track into four sessions spanning performance modeling, tuning for exascale systems, HPC as a tool to enable science and programming, tackling programming challenges for reconfigurable computing, and overcoming the challenges in exascale programming. First up, I want to take a moment to thank all my speakers who enthusiastically agreed to share their ideas and talk to the ISC audience. So thank you very much. And I also thank my session chairs who would um, technically be running these sessions uh, when we uh, will be inviting you know, the speakers for all the corresponding sessions to give their talks in person next year in ISC 2021. Um, for now, I have some slides from the speakers. So there's a teaser trailer of what their talks will be about. So the slides are theirs and the narration is mine. So I might add a little spiel to it. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> um, okay, so let's see what Dr. Lavanya Ramakrishnan will be talking about. She's a staff scientist at the Lawrence Berkeley National Lab, where Lavanya's topic is going to be about analysis of workflows. And we know that workflows form a very important uh, topic for HPC ecosystems. It requires analysis of workloads with respect to understanding the resource needs, not only of individual jobs, but also of dependencies between jobs. To that end, Lavinia is going to talk about some of the important aspects of workflow management, including scheduling workflows, managing deep memory storage hierarchy, elastic resource management, and stream processing to support experimental and observational data. Next, we will have Professor Jack Tungara from University of Tennessee, where he is going to address how the architectures have been evolving or, you know, as we speak, and how that has brought up new challenges to achieving high performance mathematical solvers, necessitating development and analysis of new algorithms, which are then embodied in software libraries. So we can see this beautiful flow chart with the next axis of adoption levels of, you know, we can see the different levels, internal group through external group. So stakeholders at different levels, and we see in the Y axis, the implementation robustness, starting from algorithm all the way to a portable software. So we can clearly see what it takes for basic research to go all the way into its acceptance and adoption by, um, you know, uh, communities of interest. And, uh, he also says that with the move to exascale, increasing intentionality about this process will benefit the long-term sustainability of the scientific software stack. The next three talks are going to be about HPC as a tool for enabling and facilitating science and engineering. To that end, I have Dr. Sadaf Alam from Swiss National Supercomputing Center in Switzerland, and she's a chief technology officer at CSCS. Sadaf is going to be talking about supercomputing infrastructure as code, meaning programming of HPC, networking, and storage systems. She's going to take Meteor Swiss weather forecasting platform as an example to talk about how traditional supercomputing can leverage cloud computing IAC without compromising performance and scale. Then I have Dr. Guido Yukland from Helmholtz Centrum Dresden Rosendorf. Um, he's also the head of the computational science department at HCDR. He is going to talk about driving the digitalization of modern science. As we can see, domain science has a number of challenges. It has those three V's of data, variety, volume, and velocity. Then it has the experimental complexity, and then there is the reproducible complexity. Plus, we need there is a need to marry computer information and data science with novel methods in order to do the needful using AI methods, HPC system complexity, and also dealing with the programmability aspects of things. To that end, we definitely and desperately need research software engineers, that's the RSC and computational science, who will form the catalyst to bridge the gap between domains, which will enable the digital transformation of the domain sciences 
through training, consulting, and practical solutions. We all know it's a steep learning curve to be able to use HPC tools and techniques, right? So it takes a while to get to the phase where we are comfortable using tools and techniques, and that requires a lot of training. That forms a very nice segue to Mr. Robert Henschel from Indiana University's uh, talk. He's a director of research in software and solutions, where Robert is going to talk about using high performance remote research desktops to lower the barrier of entry for HPC resources. All of us teach, train in some shape or form, right? And attracting new users to HPC environments has become even harder because HPC environments have become very smarter. So how do you really get the users, you know, from different uh, backgrounds and how, how, do, how do we get them to use computing environments? Indiana University has gone down this exact path over the last several years and Robert is going to share his experiences and recipes in this talk. And he's going to predominantly talk about providing a familiar desktop environment as an interface to HPC systems, which would make a wonderful starting point to attract new users. We will then have um, three speakers in the uh, area of reconfigurable computing. There was also a personal agenda to this because reconfigurable computing, FPGAs, and system on chips are a topic to my heart. So I wanted my audience to take away, you know, what's happening in the uh, reconfigurable computing field. To that end, I have Professor Diana Goringer from TU Dresden, Germany. She's a professor at the Faculty of Computer Science who will be talking about accelerating image processing applications on reconfigurable computing platforms. We all know that if you have programmed an FPGA or you know, a reconfigurable computing device, it is a tough nut to crack, right? And we have seen several high-level synthesis tools out there in trying to facilitate better programming. Um, Diana has also published this work, High Flip VX, at the recent 2019 Symposium of Applied Reconfigurable Computing, where this talk is going to present a highly optimized, parameterizable, and streaming capable HLS, high level synthesis open source library for FPGAs, which is called the High Flip VX. She's targeting computer vision, where the computer vision field has been advancing in the past several years, and it's been applied to many different applications nowadays. The results, the evaluations um, will also be comparable to XF OpenCV as part of our evaluation, um, uh, uh, evaluation topic. So next up in the same line, we have Michael Bloxham, software engineer at, at the US uh, and Intel US, where he's going to talk about enhancing open fabric interface to support COPA acceleration capabilities. What does COPA stand for? Configurable Network Protocol Accelerator. So the whole goal is, you know, given the trend towards the tight integration of communication and computation, there is a dire need for a standard API to expose these capabilities to application and middleware. So he's gonna talk about how COPA project adopted OFI and extended it to invoke COPA acceleration capabilities. Then I have David Donofrio from TACT Com Comp Labs, where he is going to talk about Open System on Chip System Architect, which is an open source hardware generation flow that starts with an ISA specification and generates both processor RDL as well as LLVM based compiler targeted to your processor design. Again, the importance of co design um, flows, which forms a very powerful tool for reconfigurable computing. Then I have um, another talk on the multi-level scheduling and load balancing in scientific applications from Professor Florina Chorba at the University of Basel, where she's given me this beautiful figure, which talks about exposing, expressing, exploiting parallelism, both at the software as well as the hardware level. Some are at the high level, which is above the process node tuple, and some are at the lower level, which is below the process and the node tuple. And she talks about this with respect to a star collision simulation example. Um, and she will, be, she will be telling us about the, you know, what are the issues load imbalances can cause towards an MPI plus OpenMP um, usage of, on a scientific application. Plus the right-hand plot actually tells you, tells us very clearly that if it was a straightforward scheduling, you know, you see a, you see a definite rise, exponential rise in the wall clock time especially given the X number of you know, iteration time steps, as opposed to 
conjoint choice of scheduling methods, which can definitely lower the wall clock time, which is where you see this particular drop, which is good. So that will be the talk on this uh, particular topic, followed by uh, the last speaker I have is Sato-san from Riken RCCS Japan, where he's going to talk about programming models and language for Fugaku. And uh, what are the programming models beyond Fugaku? And as we know, Fugaku forms the, uh, you know, it's, the, it's a new ARM-based many-core processor and delivery of the Fugaku has been completed. So definitely looking forward to all that that's going to you know, be needed uh, before we can program for Gaku. So those are my speakers and I'm very much looking forward to their talks and um, I'm sure you are too. So until we hear from them in person, you stay safe and I hope to see you sometime very soon. So take care.